Starting in this video, we're going to be spending more and more time with Silverlight topics than with C-sharp topics. So you can see now we're beginning that transition over. Uh, and the first thing that we're going to need to do is become even more familiar with our tools in Visual Studio to deal with XAML. Up to this point, for example, we've only been working with this, the XAML designer that looks like a phone. We've been dragging and dropping controls and for the most part ignoring the code window to the right of it. However, as we progress on, that'll become increasingly the window that we work in. So I want you to be familiar with all the tools and gadgets that are embedded on this little designer window. You might feel like you've created so many Silverlight applications using the XAML designer already that you're already quite familiar with it. However, for the sake of completeness, I want to spend just a little bit of time pointing out those little features here and there that can make your work even quicker and more effective. So first of all, whenever you open up the XAML designer, you can see I have a new project, XAML designer. Not going to do anything special with this per se. Uh, but when we open it up, you can see that there's two panes. On the left hand side is the designer pane and on the right hand side is the XAML pane. The design pane provides a fast convenient way to arrange controls and set their properties visually. However, everything that goes on in the design pane has only one purpose and that is to create code over here on the right hand side in the XAML pane. The XAML is what actually gets compiled into a .NET assembly, a .dll file that ultimately gets packaged up in a zap file as we saw in yesterday's lessons. So I've already pointed this out earlier in today's lessons, but to reiterate, whenever you drag and drop a control from the toolbox, like we're doing right now, and drop it on the design surface, uh, what happens behind the scenes is that it's generating XAML code over here in the code pane. You can see here, we just drag and dropped a button, and so it created this XAML code to define a button. Similar, similarly, whenever we uh, take action in the properties window and make a change in the properties, it too will make changes to the uh, actual XAML code. The XAML code, again, is what gets compiled. It is the most important product of our work in the design pane and in the properties window. The design pane, unfortunately, can become a crutch and hide the important details and the names of objects and the names of properties that you may need to reference and, and come to know by heart. If you think you're going to be creating Windows Phone 7 applications on an ongoing basis or any other type of Silverlight application, you might want to discipline yourself to only use the XAML code pane and write the code by hand. This will force you to learn more about XAML and Silverlight even if it means you'll be building your initial projects at a slower pace. In the next three or four lessons, I'm going to be writing XAML code so that we can learn more about how it works under the hood. For now, let's take a tour of this important window and some of the little tools that are included that we've ignored up to now. At the very top in the center area between the two panes, we can see there are there's a tab to the left and a tab to the right. Uh, this will allow us to, to only view the designer or only view the uh, the code pane. I'll come back to that in just a moment. I can also swap the panes if I need to. As you've already seen at the bottom of this bar, I'm able to return back to a vertical split. I can also create a horizontal split if I need uh, more more space horizontally to see a long code passage. Of course, I can get back to the vertical alignment by clicking the vertical button. Uh, also, I can collapse the pane using this key, this button at the bottom as well. And just to give me a visual reminder, I can resize the two panes with this middle area. You can see the little handle indicator there in the middle of this divider section. Within the code window itself, you have this little splitter bar, so I can drag this down and now I can look at two different areas within the same file. That's sometimes handy when I need to reference something earlier in the file and I need to copy it or at least remind myself what something is named and then work with it down here lower within that same file. Additionally, if I want to change the size of the text, suppose I, I move to a larger monitor uh, and I can now modify the size of the text simply by using this little uh, area here in the bottom left hand corner of the code window that allows me to adjust exactly what size the text is. 
I prefer 100%, so we'll leave it there for now. On the XAML designer side, you can see, and if I were to give us a little more space here, you can see that there is this zoom control. So I can similar, similarly zoom in and zoom out of the designer, just like I did with the code itself. And I can actually use this zoom to fit button to uh, allow me to see the entire uh, phone interface uh, easily without having to find just the right mix of percentages. At the bottom left hand corner you can see and we've already used this document outline button to select a XAML object that would otherwise be difficult to select on the design pane when we selected the phone application page and then set its properties. Uh, each time an element is selected, whether in the document outline or on the designer itself, it displays the name of that item here in, in this uh, footer area, uh, the, element tree, the selected element tree node. It displays not only its name, but also its type. If we were to hover our mouse cursor over it, it would give us a, a visual thumbnail of what that particular item looks like. So selecting a button and then I'm going to hover over button and uh, it's difficult to see here because of the properties that are set but that would display the button. It also shows us uh, the progression of items so the phone application page uh, owns a grid. If I can click on that and then to the right of this I can select a child of the grid uh, a content panel for example and then I can check select a child of the content panel called button. All right, so there are many different ways to navigate through your document, whether using the visual designer, whether using the selected element tree node, or using the little child select child uh, menu off to the right hand side. And finally, back in the code window, there's one uh, feature that will help us dramatically as we're beginning to write the code. Uh, for our XAML pages by hand, and that is IntelliSense. So IntelliSense pops open here as I begin to type with an open angle bracket. I can create a new button. And I'll just copy some of the properties of the item above it. And when I complete that line, notice that it put a new click me button on the designer surface. Okay, so in a nutshell, that is pretty much everything I can show you about uh, the designer, the XAML designer. In the next videos, we're going to start typing primarily within that code window, as I promised, as a means of learning more about XAML. And so we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.